Okay, time for a new video, and whether you are somebody new to my channel or you are returning to my channel to watch this video, it is greatly appreciated. As always, I'm filming this video in one go, so if I stumble over my words moving forwards, I apologise about that. And also, if the quality of this video is fairly poor as well, if there's any lag, anything like that at all, sadly it cannot be helped, and hopefully it is not too much of an issue for you. This is yet another Eurovision 2022 related video here on my channel, specifically a Melody Festivalen related video, because today I am going to be listening to snippets of all of the songs involved in the third semi-final of this year's Melfest, which, as we all know, is the Swedish selection method for the Eurovision Song, Con excuse me, Eurovision Song Contest, and has been for many, many years. Now, I am on the SVT Play website, where snippets of the songs have been uploaded. I think it's one minute long snippets again, so I'm going to get straight into that in just a moment. But before that, my thoughts on semi-final two of Melfest, which, as I'm recording this, took place last Saturday. We know the exact results. That's something new that they're doing this year. So we know exactly where each song finished, which gives us a bit of an indication as to how well the automatic qualifiers might do in the final when we get there. I don't know. Anyway, uh, it was fairly predictable, and I think I predicted the top four before I'd even heard one second of any of the songs last week. So that was pretty good going. But Liamu, song one on the night, he went through in first place with Bluffin. Very slick performance, very radio friendly. He's a very confident performer. He looked pretty good. I think he was wearing a black jacket, a sort of purple colour scheme predominantly. It's been a little while since I saw these performances. But it was very good. And there's this moment in the chorus where his voice is altered. You'll know what I'm on about if you've heard the song slash seen the performance. I'm not sure I really enjoy that, because it always feels to me as though it's a cop-out. So rather instead of singing live, you're relying on the pre-recorded backing vocals a little bit too much. I don't know, it, it wasn't too over the top. It was fine. It was obviously going to go through. Liamu will probably push for the win in the final. Certainly... It's the sort of song that probably will. Uh, also, song six, John Lundvig is through for a third Melfest final, I believe this is, with Englevakt, which is a Swedish language ballad. I have to say, I don't think this is that amazing. It's a perfectly fine ballad, but I don't think it should be pushing for the win. However, I can see the international jurors in the final lapping this up. He was on the secondary stage, if I recall, a sort of white outfit. It's a very touching ballad. It builds up nicely, but it's not a really explosive finale, I would say. It's very nice, but nothing truly incredible, if you ask me. But he sang very well. Uh, in third place, and going through to the new second chance round, is My Way, song 7 by Tona Sekelius. Nice vocals. This had a sort of regal feel to it, if that's the best term to use. I thought it was a bit of a static performance at times, but on the whole, not too bad. It's got a good message, it's fairly uplifting. I can see this making the final, and I can actually see it getting quite a lot of love from the Swedish public as well, particularly, perhaps, from younger viewers. So, I wouldn't rule this song out, causing maybe a surprise in the grand final if it gets there. I'm not saying it's winning Melfest, but it might be better than we're thinking. And then, uh, Alvaro Estrella. Ah, I'm looking at this. Alvaro Estrella finished third, pretty much, and Tona finished fourth, based on the points system. I think I'm getting that right. Anyway, Alvaro, unsurprisingly, also threw to the fifth semi-final with Suave. Ultra-predictable stuff here. I think I said it last week. We knew what his song was going to sound like before we'd even heard a single second of it. Uh, he's got Melfest pedigree. Every song he's had in Melfest has pretty much been the same thing, sort of. Um, this had a sort of Latin American sound to it, bit of choreography, he looked pretty good, sounded pretty good, there was a sort of fiery theme to the performance as well, totally fine, nothing incredible, he probably will make the final, but let's be honest here, he's not going to get a huge amount of love if he gets there, because there are better songs. And that means, out, in fifth place, browsing collection with face in the crowd, this was the sort of pop punk song, very mid-2000s, the sort of music I grew up with and still enjoy now. All-female group, flashing lights, pyros, good energy. Um, but really, I think we could have all seen this not going through, which is a shame. I would say it is in my personal top two of this heat, 
But there we are. Uh, sixth place, Niello. Oh, sorry. This is all messed up, isn't it? What am I on about? So, fourth place. So, just missing out on the second chance round. Heavens above. Is I Want to Be Loved by Samira Manners. Melfest debut. Nearly making the cut. I mean, that's not an embarrassment, absolutely. I thought this was a very fine performance. I actually gave it a 7 out of 10 last week, I think, which was the highest mark out of anybody. I'm not so keen on it now I've heard the whole thing and seen the performance. She was a little bit emotional towards the end. I think she was in dungarees, was she not? And she moved on to the secondary stage near the end. Lots of little lights dangling down from the ceiling gave it a very cosy, intimate feel. I want to be loved. She was singing in this sort of strong English accent, at least to me. Uh, so it was memorable because of the way her voice sounded, perhaps more than the song itself. I don't know, but still I enjoyed it for what it was. And then uh, it was Browsing Collection. And then last, a real shame, but not too much of a surprise, Tror du Abrirme by Niello and Lisa Ajax. Uh, Lisa looked fantastic and sounded really good. And I think if it wasn't for the staging, this song would have been even more dead and buried on arrival. They went for this sort of hairdresser set pastel colours, uh, Lisa interacting with telephones and the sort of hair dryers, there were dancers. She sort of carried this performance a little bit. Niello was fine, but really it was the Lisa Ajax show for three minutes, in a way. Um, I'd like to see her come back at some point because I've really enjoyed everything that she's released as a musician, pretty much. It, but it might be a few more years yet. Anyway, that's semi-final two. Semi-final three looks like this. It takes place this Saturday, the 19th of February, but there's so many other shows happening that I think Melfest might be brushed aside by quite a few Eurovision fans this week, but it is what it is. The acts include I Can't Get Enough by Katsiopea. I'm really interested in this one. She is 33, covered in tattoos. Her real name is Moa Carla Becker. She's written music for a lot of South Korean bands, including Twice, who are a girl group, and I know they're a big deal. Um... She's released her own music as well. Really interested to see what she's bringing to the table. Song two is Lick Licked Sloot by Lancelot. His name is Carl Hedman. His mother's sister was in the 2006 Melfest. His mother is actually a model and uh, she's had success in the past as well. Anyway, Lancelot was a dancer in Let's Dance 2019. And he's also had his own reality series on TV3. So there you go. Uh, song three, Best to Come by Lisa Miskowski. Uh, beautiful woman. She's 46. Um, during the 2014 Winter Olympics, she was a sports reporter. Her mother is Finnish. Her father is Czech. Uh, she enjoys snowboarding. She was in Melfest in 2012 with Why Start a Fire, but she finished way down in ninth place, I think. Something like that. Yes. She's released a whole bunch of albums, all of which have done reasonably well, so she's one to keep an eye on, absolutely. Then we have a group, Tribe Friday, with Shut Me Up, and it's a male group, I believe, although is that a female there? I apologise. One of them looks like they've stepped out of Oasis, anyway. Uh, but yes, they're obviously an up-and-coming group with Shut Me Up, yes. Uh, song 5, Faith Kakembo, she's back. The song is called Freedom. Faith is a very good singer. Her actual name is Elna Wilen. 36, born in Uganda, Crying Rivers, didn't make the top four a few years ago, but it was a lovely song. Linda Bengtsing is back, I think this is her eighth Melfest attempt. Fierfaldicht Hurrah, she's 47. She's only released two albums apparently, and not since 2008, but a whole bunch of singles. She usually brings a touch of schlager pop to Melfest, and, you know, we do need a bit of that every now and then. And song seven... Definitely a favourite, surely, on paper. Bigger Than the Universe by Anders Bagger. He is 54, so there's a few older musicians in this heat, I think it's fair to say. He's a songwriter, he's a bit of a singer as well, he's been a judge on Swedish Idol in the past. I think he won Sweden's Masked Singer as well, but I could be wrong. He co-wrote When the Music Dies, Azerbaijan's entry on Home Soil in 2012. He produced Azerbaijan's entry in 2010. And he's married to a former Miss Sweden. Hello. So, with that being said, let's get straight into this. I'm on the SVT website. Uh, you might be able to hear my computer fan whirring away. So let's get straight into this. I'm going to make a very rough prediction once again. Let me know your thoughts, particularly if you're Swedish. I'm going to try and rattle through this because I haven't got a huge amount of time. Um, so, I think Linda 
will be out. Anders will be going through. Um, I'm going to go out on a whim and say that Cassiopeia is going through as well, directly, with Anders. She's a very interesting looking woman. You know, in this picture, she's wearing a very flowery top. Tattoos all up her neck. Purple hat. Yes, very interesting indeed. Hopefully that's going to be a good song. Uh, what else have we got here? Lisa, I think, will probably be third or fourth along with Lancelot. I've heard his song is the sort of thing Sweden might go for, which means Faith and Tribe Friday are out. But who knows? Who knows? That's just a very rough, perhaps silly prediction. So with that being said, I'm going to start with Linda Bengtsing and Fierfaldigt Hurra. Let me know your thoughts on this. Absolute first listens. I've not heard a thing. Here we go. Might be a bit of lag, so I apologise for that. The video I'm watching won't be in the bottom corner of the video you're watching, but it is what it is. Mm. It's taking ages to load up here, so I really apologise. Come on, deliver the goods. Ugh, please, hurry up. Okay, here we go. Okay. It's quite up tempo, building up to something. In Swedish, of course. Okay. It's got momentum. Come on, big chorus. Mm. This isn't bad. It's catchy. Yeah, it's got a sort of party atmosphere. For at the Fins, which was also the title of a Melfest track many years ago. Lovely. Um, yeah, good energy, really up tempo, sounds quite fun. I'm not sure it's a qualifier. I don't know why I'm using this pen either. I'm going to give Linda uh, maybe a six and a half out of ten to begin with because it sounded quite promising. I was expecting something a little bit more dated, maybe, something not quite as frantic in sound. But yeah, not bad. Let's now listen to Faith Kakembo with Freedom. I'm expecting something quite soulful, rich, smooth vocals here. Let's give it a listen. Faith Kakembo, Freedom. Piano. Atmospheric. Nice voice. Just a touch of fragility to it. But it's beautiful. Hate the way we make each other bleed. Yeah. You can sort of see how this would be staged as well. Mmm. Stirring stuff. Um. I don't know. That chorus was very short and a little disappointing. The verses sound quite nice, though. Obviously, I need to hear the whole thing. Six and a half out of ten. Not bad. Not sure that's really going to do the business myself. Maybe with older viewers more than younger viewers, I don't know, but that was okay. Now it's Tribe Friday with Shut Me Up. Let's give this a listen. Oh. Oh, this is straight out of sort of late 2000s British indie rock. The View, absolutely. Bands like that. The Fratellis. 
good bands. Oh yeah. Six and a half out of ten again. It's quite feel good. Puts a smile on your face, I guess. Oh yeah. That sounds so much like something that the Fratellis would probably do. Check out their music if you're interested. They're a Scottish band. Really good. Uh, six and a half out of ten. That sounded so British. Very much in the mould of indie rock groups from years ago. Tremendous. Um, I can appreciate that sound. The song itself, though, yeah, it's lacking something for me. I wouldn't be surprised if it finishes last here, to be completely honest. Let's now listen to songs that may well go through, beginning with Lancelot and Lick Licked Sloot. He has co-written this song, so let's give it a listen. Here we go. Piano and acoustic guitar. Sounds very relaxing and pretty. The birds sing. Oh, this is very beautiful. It's got quite a high voice. Okay. It's a song to sway to. Seven out of ten. Needs to build up a lot. Yeah, I mean, that sounded pretty promising. Uh, it's quite low-key. He's got a lovely voice. Like I said, quite a high voice, but that's no bad thing. Uh, it's a simple enough melody. It's the sort of song that you can sway to and just feel very relaxed with. Yeah, I can see that making the top four, absolutely. Next is... Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Next is Lisa Biskowski, and this is Best to Come. And she's also co-written her song. She's wearing a hat in this picture. Let's give it a listen. Ooh. Do 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 do. I like that sound in the background. This immediately feels like a road trip song, if you see what I mean. Okay. Quite dreamy vocals. Feels a bit country. Driving in the rain. Hmm. Six and a half out of ten again. Um, sounded nice. Sounded pretty good, absolutely. Just lacking that little extra pizzazz for me in the chorus. But of course, I haven't heard the whole thing yet. Uh, yeah, that probably is in with a good chance of making the top four as well. But I also wouldn't be surprised if it goes out. I think Lancelot's song, song, Lancelot's song probably has more going for it, to be honest. That leaves uh, the two major... I don't know why I pressed that button. That now leaves the two major contenders, perhaps... For this semi-final. And I'm going to begin with Anders Bagger. With Bigger Than The Universe. There he is. Bald. Beard. Jimmy Jansson has co-written this song. He's co-written many a Melfest track. And been in Melfest as a singer himself. So here we go. Bigger Than The Universe. Oh, come on. Apple Tree. We've got this synth sound in the back. Oh, cheesy lyrics maybe. Strings. Hmm. 
Everyone's a champion. Nice voice, yeah. Oh, it's building up well. Uplifting. It's got this sort of inspirational sound. Mm, mm. Oh, that's it. Well, I was getting into it, but at the same time, I don't really know if it's anything new. Um, it feels as though I've heard things like that in the past in Melfest, to be honest with you. Not too sure I love the lyrics, but the lyrics don't really matter too much anyway. I'm going to give it, you believe it, a six and a half out of ten. Nothing really blowing me away yet, but of course there is one song left, and that is I Can't Get Enough by Katsi Opea, and she's co-written this song with a bunch of people, including Paul Ray, who we're familiar with, of course. I assume it's the same Paul. Anyway, here we go. I like her voice as well. Oh, hand claps, is that? Taste like that. This is okay. Oh. Now we've got this sort of pulsating beat. Hmm. Uh, gotta say I'm a little bit disappointed now that I've heard that snippet. The chorus, I don't know, lacked a little bit of oomph. Verse sounded promising though, with the beat and the sort of instrumentation we had going on. 6 out of 10, which is actually the lowest mark out of any song for this heat. So I've given Lancelot the highest mark, unbelievably. Didn't expect that, with Lick Lick Sloot. Gotta be careful how you say that, of course. Um... Yeah, it's mainly 6.5 out of 10, to be honest. Uh, so based on what I've heard, I don't think I'm really going... Well, actually, I am going to change my prediction. Anders is probably winning this heat quite comfortably. He's such a recognisable name in Sweden, and the song sounds pretty decent. I think Lancelot will go through as well. And then I, th I don't think Katzi's actually going to make the cut at all. So I'm going to put Lisa in third place... And maybe Faith Kakembo through to the new second chance round as well. So that's it. Let me know what you think. Not quite as strong as the previous two heats, but I was expecting this one to be slightly weaker based on what we saw on paper anyway. Uh, but that's it. Um, there's so many more things to come with regards to the Eurovision Song Contest. I might be a little bit behind with some blog posts and videos moving forwards because it's really getting very, very busy now. Loads of internal selections to go. We haven't really had one yet, which is extraordinary. But until next time, take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Let me know your thoughts. Links in the description to my other social media pages as usual. Hopefully the quality wasn't too bad. And bye for now. Take care.